you know, put himself in position to catch the ball. First and 10 at the 40. Brady and Downs. And still keeps it to the right. I think that's the first option play that he's uh, run uh -huh. today. I think it's his first carry. Uh, they don't have him listed. Uh, first half, but they only they only list the top the top rushers there. I noticed Good. they didn't list Kevin Smelly. He, he had he I think he gained four and he lost four and he came up with zero. But he uh, he got it all back in a hurry here in the second it's half. Interesting. This work cost Lombardi. He carried the ball ten times for 41 yards in the first half. Back to pass, Schultz, and his fullback, Peter Lombardi, doesn't hang on to it. I just couldn't say, Lombardi caught two passes in the first half of 19 yards. He's a great target out there. He just didn't show the hands that he showed in the first half on that ball. That one should have been caught. Now, just over 11 minutes to go here in the third quarter. The Minutemen lead it, 7-0. Our forecast of an offensive ball game was incorrect. I don't think I'll ever make a forecast like that again. Well, if you're talking to both coaches uh, going into this uh, football game, I think the game is exactly what they uh, want it to be. Schultz, and this ball is tipped, and it'll fall incomplete. In the flat. Steve Brothers was in on the play that time. Got a hand on the ball. That'll bring up fourth down. Punting situation. Very high. And the punts, ball's being punted from this position. Back to receive. The ball's being punted from this position, Jim. You notice the receiver's on the 10-yard line. The ball goes over his head. He's going to let it go. No, he oh, didn't. That's a bad, bad, bad play. Mistake. Okay. Now, there's a penalty on that play against Villanova because they have got to give him two yards from the defender and in order to get a, a, a catch on the ball. I shouldn't, I was going to say fair catch. That's really what it is, but it's not a fair catch because a fair catch is when the receiver waves his hand. But the defender got too close to the receiver and that's a penalty against Villanova. But not a good play on Jerome Bledsoe's part. Uh, as you said, at, at where he was standing, that ball, he had to let that thing go. Number one, he should have let it go. Number two, he did catch the ball and you watch the Villanova defenders get so close to him that he doesn't have a chance chance to catch it. See, right there. Yeah. 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 That could have been tragic. Going. That was Rich Cernak. So two mistakes. One mistake by UMass. One mistake by Villanova. The winner, UMass. And the Minutemen take over at their own 17-yard line. The quick pitch out to Smelly. He's up the left side. And out to the 26. Kevin Smelly carries from David Mitchell and Smelly in the backfield. Smelly in motion and the calls to Mitchell up the middle. David Mitchell carries from Massachusetts. First down for the Minutemen. Boy, Mitchell's made a great return. He's been a factor in this football game. He sure has. He's doing a nice job. He hasn't had a lot of carries, but he, he's had some uh, key plays. He's had some real good plays. Mitchell and Smelly. This one's to Smelly. And he gets maybe two yards on the play. That'll bring up a second down and eight. And I give him three yards, second and seven. They're doing what they want to do. They're moving the ball, they're keeping it on the ground, they're keeping the ball, they're keeping the zone over offense off the field. They're both playing very cautious. Newsom to the left. Tobin is on the right. Out to Smelly. Good tackle. Good tackle in there by Scott Rushton who came up from that strong safety position. He's made several big tackles today. I bet that's an option play and a very good defense on, defense on that option. Uh, an option, you've got to come out and make a decision right now. See, they strung this thing out and you've got to give credit to the defense for doing that. 
and therefore it was not a, a great play. The ball did get back the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and seven. Third down and seven. Smellage out at the flanker spot. Three wide receivers on this play. Uh, he wanted Smelly. He's waving for him to go on downfield. And Dave Palazzi kept it. But he did not get out to the first down mark. He's about a yard short. Right. Well, it looks like they're going to put it on the 40. Make that two yards short. And it'll be fourth down. And Dimitri Yavis is on to punt. So he, he's uh, due for a boomer. Yeah, Brady's not playing him very deep at all. He's just back here about 30 yards, 32 yards. And that's his best punt yet. He backed him up a bit. Brady drops him. But he recovers his own fumble at the Villanova 20-yard line. There is a flag the on kick. the play. Yep, erupting the kicker call. So the Minutemen get a break. They'll get a first down out of this. And while the uh, offense and defense comes back onto the field, we'll take a break. We'll be back after this. It's a $2 million furniture disposal sale at Unclaimed Freight. We've got to make room for incoming shipments. And that means you save 40 to 74%. Like this three-piece living room for only $697. Or for holiday entertaining, this five-piece brass and glass dining room, just $349. And this four-piece oak finished bedroom is just $597 at Unclaimed Freight. It's great. You're about to enter another dimension in education, where time expands to allow a student to earn three credits in just three weeks, where time lost can be regained and poor grades improved, a time for learning suspended in that zone of non-being between autumn and spring semesters. Intercession, your chance to change history in a brief three weeks. Intercession, the fast track into the education zone. Only at Springfield College, beginning January 2nd. Call for a free brochure. So the penalties hurt Villanova once again. This time uh, it was the defense, or actually the special teams, that uh, came up with the penalty. I think they call that one five-yard penalty bumping the kicker. That was a minor penalty of the roughing the kicker calls that you can have. First and ten, UMass at their own 45. And Palazzi is going to throw it deep to this one. You got luck! You got luck! You got luck! Incomplete. They've run that play a number of times today, and they've thrown to the to the back side to Tobin. That time they were down the same sideline to uh, to uh, Mitchell. So no, no it's Newsom. Uh, Newsom, excuse me. See, we haven't seen Chip Mitchell today. Well, he did have some injuries last week. Yeah. Well, this play is going nowhere. Uh, Villanova is starting to stop the run now. Boy, that was almost a good pass play just now. That was uh, David Mitchell. What the coaches do at halftime, Jim, is that they go in and they, they keep a chart, running chart of what happens the first half, what happens on the first down play, what happens on second and third, and then they adjust the defense to that in the second half. So the tendencies in the first half are played in the second half. Palazzi out in the flat to Smelly, and he does not have it. He drops her. That was Scott Rushton again. And they've heard Scott Rushton's footsteps quite a few times today. That'll bring up fourth down and 11, and Yavis will come on to punt once again. We'll see where Brady lines up this time, see if he respects his foot a little more. I think he's uh, about the same thing. Well, that's where he should be. Uh, he's, he's got to go on what's happened during the football game, and that's where he should be. This will drive him back five yards. Brady at his own 15, and he's down at the 17-yard line. So Villanova will take over at its own 17. Seven minutes, 44 to seconds to go in the third quarter, and we'll be back after this. One 800 loan yes What's that? The Money Store's new local toll-free number. 1-800-LOAN-YES? 
That's the number to call for second mortgage loans. I can remember that. Don't forget, fixed rate. That's right. The rate stays the same for the life of the loan. Qualified homeowners can get quick approval right over the phone. Borrow up to $100,000 or more. Call the money store toll free. Dial 1-800-LOAN-YES. First and ten at their own 16-yard line. Brady and down. Yeah. And this one is to the tailback. Jeff Dingle. And he gets out to the 20-yard line. John McEwen was a stop for Massachusetts. Jeff Dingle is going to wind up with a 100-yard day here, I believe. John McEwen in on the tackle again, of course. Oh, he's got a bundle up today. I wouldn't be surprised if Dingle already has 100 yards in this game. He had 76 at the end of the first half with uh, on 13 carries. But the workhorse has been uh, Lombardi, of course. He is on track to be one of the great rushers in uh, their history. This passes to Dingle now, out at the 32-yard line. They'll run him out of bounds at the 36. Pass to number 44, Jeff Dingle, played for a Villanova first. Uh, sophomore, a redshirt sophomore. He played in 86 as a freshman, and then uh, they redshirted him last year. It's, uh, it's a little surprising. As long as Villanova's played football, they've never had a back to gain 1,000 yards in one season, and Dingle has that chance uh, this year. I think he's lacking something like in the area 250 yards. But means he's going to have to have a good week uh, next Saturday uh -huh. as well to do it. He needed two 100-plus performances, and uh, as you said, looks like he's going to get one today. Passes to Cincy, and there's a flag on the play. I think he might have got a... I think we got a face mask on that one. That's uh, against uh, Jerome Bledsoe, I believe. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, it's a face mask. That's the we preliminary series. It happened. It's thrown down the middle of the field. See, they... Yep. Massachusetts. Getting that, getting that two-deep coverage. Yeah, yeah right mask. there. Right there, buddy. Jerome Bledsoe. Don't think he meant to do it. It just wound no, up in No, I'm sure he, sure he didn't. <laughs> that, they get the hand on that helmet, and it's... You can't grab on the helmet, and uh, the only place you have to grab on to is a face mask, of course. Uh, it wasn't flagrant, and now Villanova has the ball at the 20, at the 34-yard line. First and 10. Moved across midfield once again. This is Lombardi. And the Massachusetts defense has cracked down considerably on the run also. I've got to say to this point, Jim, uh, and I've watched UMass play a number of times this year, is that I've got to feel that uh, this is the best effort by the defense this season, in my mind. Well, they're up against a good offense today. Yes, this they are. And is well balanced. They've got good runners and uh, good receivers, too, and they've, they've done both today. They've had a little more trouble stopping the pass. And here's another one. There's a flag. Schultz will go down. I'm sure we got uh, offensive holding again. So. Number 90, Steve Brothers. Steve Brothers in on the stop. Yeah, you're right. Holding, called against Villanova. So they've crossed midfield, and it takes them two plays to pick up a penalty and go backwards, and they have just been plagued with this one all day. Seven in the first half. I think this is the second one they've had in the second half, and uh, it's just... Uh, they had the, the punting. Just a big factor penalty. in this, uh, this game. Nine penalties in a game is, uh, is, is a great number, and to have nine with five minutes uh, and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter is a lot. Second down and 16. Down. And this is a little shovel pass back up the middle to Dingle. And they're on to him. He picks up three yards, maybe four. Number 16, Matt Tully. Not back to the original line of scrimmage. And on defense for you, Matt. Matt Tully in on the tackle. Matt Tully uh, is a fine young football player for the university. Coming into this game, he has 72 tackles, and he's the heir apparent to uh, McEwen for another year. No question about it. I think that Coach Reed will move him inside in McEwen's position. He's from Methuen, Mass, a uh, outstanding high school player, and, and just has done a great job here. Third and 13. Schultz back to pass, and he gets it off to Cincy. Almost it is intercepted. No, nope, it's not. Not a great play. And 
the Minutemen not real happy with this call. But that will bring up fourth down. Here's the replay. Let's see. Uh, we can get a good shot at it right here. See the blitz coming from the backside. Boy, he, he did a great job avoiding that blitz, and I don't think it was coming. He knew it was coming. Had Dorian almost had him. Uh, I there think the official made the right call. Okay, this punt, punt situation let this punt again. go, and it's not going to make it into the end zone. But he made the right decision, Jim. Yeah, I know yeah. it leads him in bad uh, field position, but the, the uh, receiver made the right decision. You know, he's also looking back into the sun in that situation, yeah, that's right. too. It's a 37-yard punt. That's, uh, that's a big play for Villanova. But boy, those penalties raising Kane with Villanova's offense. Well, the Minutemen will take over in the hole. Four minutes, 44 seconds to go in the third period, and they have a 7-0 lead. Scores have been hard to come by today. Pastoric in the middle. Yes, Pastoric for the minute man. When you get yourself in this position like uh, UMass is right now with, uh, seven, you know, on the two, one or two yard line, you run the same offense that you run going into the end zone from the one or two yard and line. Second down. They got no yardage on that play. It'll be second down and 10. Maybe even a little bit more than 10. They want to try to get a first down in this situation. Get one first down, and they've probably achieved their goal in this situation. It's going to pass. Out of the end zone, he airs it out. And this is Newsom. Boy, I'll tell you, that was a, that was a close call. That was a 41-yard pass from line of scrimmage. Gonna be interesting. He's airing this one out. Derek McEwen brought him down with a shoestring tackle that time, or he could have been gone. Get a little bit of help from the safety. So from the 41 now, Palazzi keeps it to the left, picks up a yard on the play. And that was the, uh, they have not had many pass completions today either, Bob. That was they, his they fourth, uh, that was his first completion in the second half. In the first half, hey, he was six for eight, Jim. For 159 yards. So that's seven completions on the day. Yeah. That was uh, for 103 yards in the first half. Six for eight for 103. Palazzi looking to pass once again. He's got Tobin. And it's incomplete. Another trapped ball. So that'll bring up third down and nine yards to go. The minute man at their own 43. They've run that pass road a number of times today. Uh, the other times they had uh, Tobin going down the middle of the field on that same play action. Three minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. This in Tobin. The receivers. This is Smelly in motion. have been too much time on that. No, I think they uh, they didn't run out of time. I think it's a procedure penalty. I don't know. I've got to believe that it probably is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now that'll be third down and tack on another five yards. Third down and 14. Another passing situation. Tobin's to the right and Newsom's to the left. And once again, Smell is in motion. Same play as before, I have to think. Smell is in the flat. He's not deep enough, but here it is to Tobin. <laughs> that pass is incomplete. The ref, uh, he, the he threw that one. That, that official got enthused over that play. <laughs> this one out. They got a, got a three-man rush, so they got uh, eight defenders back there. He's just throwing that one, trying to outdistance the coverage. And back to the punt formation. Yavis. And he hits the boomer. Brady's going to have to back up 10, 15 yards to take this one at zone 14. And he's 
shot. He signaled a fair catch that time. He can't advance the ball. That is ruled dead at the 14-yard line. I'm not sure he would have advanced it very far anyway. So why don't we take a break with the Minutemen leading seven to nothing. We'll be back after this. If you've been playing the field across the Connecticut Valley looking for a newer used car, look no further. Just one visit to Enfield Chrysler Plymouth and you'll be safe at home. Some dealers won't let you get to first base, but a deal with Enfield Chrysler Plymouth is a home run the first time up. You're in the major leagues with a dealer with over 25 years of reputable experience who still gives loaner cars when yours needs service. No wild pitches. Everything is right across the plate. So stop playing the field. Score now with Enfield Chrysler Plymouth Route 5 Enfield. That punt was a big play, Jim. There's a 44-yard punt plus a 5-yard penalty. Net game for UMass on that play, 49 yards. Yeah, Brady signaled the fair catch. It cost him 5 yards when he tried to run with it. And we've gone from one end to the other now. Back to pass. And he is going to be back right there at the 10-yard line. So flag is down. Going nowhere. There's a penalty flag. That uh, might be a defensive holding out there. I don't know. But just minutes ago, we were down here at the other end of the field. UMass had the ball in its own one-yard line. Second down and 10. And now it's at the other end, and Villanova's backed up. Yeah, defensive holding on that play, uh, Jim. As a, the reason I say that is the wing official, the head linesman over there, threw his flag. And generally, uh, that means that there's some kind of uh, confrontation between the receiver and the uh, defensive back. And uh, so I, I could guess and, and be 50% uh, sure I was going to make it, if that's good odds. And now they're going to mark off 15 yards. And that'll bring the ball out to the 23-yard line, first and 10. For the Wildcats. And they're out of the hole. Boy, that's a, that's a big play. That's a big penalty. Two thirty-five to go in the third quarter. He's got the dingle. He's down at the 30, at the 28-yard line. There was going to be encouraging to UMass that a year ago, Jim, uh, because Villanova won this game handily. But the thing is, is that uh, they just totally dominated UMass on the line of scrimmage, and they have not done that today. As a matter of fact, if there's any been any domination at all, I guess we'd have to give the edge to UMass particularly for big play situations, but uh, it's not the same game today as it was a year ago. First and 10. Schultz back to pass. Can't find a man open. He's going to run with it. And he'll go down at the 35-yard line. Matt Tully, outside linebacker, made the tackle on that play. Yeah, and uh, you know, Bob, they, Villanova has some big offensive linemen. They, the smallest guy in there goes 260 pounds. Oh, they're, they're huge up front. And they're veterans. Uh, okay, they, the coverage is excellent on this play, so it forces the quarterback to run run up inside. And then, uh, luckily uh, for him, he, he kept the ball for a six-yard gain because he could have thrown the ball up and it might have been for grabs. Good play Second by down and four. Not a great running Schultz. quarterback. Intercepted by John McEwen. Oh, I'll tell you what, McEwen has had a ball game out here today. We have seen him all over the field making big tackles, and now he comes up with an interception, and this one is on the Villanova side of the field. Uh, we're gonna, we've got uh, Massachusetts taking over with good field position. Great field position. Another turnover. First down and 10. John the is 32. Just, uh, outstanding linebacker. You watch the quarterback. He... Up the middle to Mitchell. And he gets into about the 28-yard line. The, here's the interception right here. The quarterback's got kind of anxious feet out there, and he's uh, he's being rushed. You got to give uh, John made a great play, but you got to give credit to the defensive line too. They help force those things happen. Second down. And uh, for a number of times, the, the Villanova quarterback Schultz is thrown into a crowd, and that time he did as well. 
and he uh, he got uh, he got beat on it. Second down and four, and it's up the middle to the story. And he is real close to a first down. He may have it. They, I wouldn't be surprised if they called for a measurement on this play. He needed four yards. They're going to bring him out. Score is seven nothing in favor of Massachusetts. 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. I don't think they have a first down. Yes, they do. They've got a first down. First down Massachusetts. Well, that's a big one. It sure is. And once again, it was Mr. Mitchell who has been a major difference in this game also. Yes, he has. Historic and Smelly in the backfield now. And it's the story. And he grinds out about uh, four or five yards and a cloud of dust. You mask a good, uh, good running fullback. So it's a uh, contrast to what Bill Nova's fullback is. He's a big, rough, tough runner, uh, looking to run over people. Where the you mask fullbacks are finesse fullbacks. They kind of pick the way up in there and then accelerate when they see an opening. Well, if you don't weigh 225 pounds, you have to be a finesse fullback. <laughs> That's the way she goes. That's the end of the third quarter. Massachusetts leads Villanova seven to nothing, and we'll be back with the fourth after this. For a limited time, get new Giant Factory Truck Savings up to $2,400 on specially equipped, powerful two- and four-wheel drive Chevy pickups, plus additional big sale discounts. Right now, from your Western Mass Chevy dealers on S10 Blazers, America's most popular sport utility vehicle. On Chevy full-size Blazers and suburban super wagons, Astro passenger vans and sport vans. On everything, yes, big dealer truck sale discounts, plus new Giant Factory Savings up to $2,400 for a limited time now at your Western Mass Chevy dealers. No one saves you more. Next on Superior Court. It makes your hair shiny and curly and gorgeous. Can the manufacturers of a hair treatment product be held liable? It didn't say it also makes your hair burn like napalm. After her treated hair went up in flames. I did nothing but light a cigarette. That's and set her hair on fire. The use of the product could not have contributed to the plaintiff's injury. Judge Clayton Thomas rules on the next Superior Court. Weekdays at 4.30 on TV 40. We're back with the fourth quarter now. It's 7-0 Massachusetts, and the Minutemen have the ball second and five to go at their own 17-yard line. And they're going up the middle with Steve Olson this time. We haven't heard too much from Steve today. Well, they've used him in spots. I think that they've uh, used him well. Uh, they've given Smelly a little bit of a rest there. Steve Olson, carried for Massachusetts. Way I'd like to thank our spotter today, Steve Jarvis, sophomore here at school. He's done a good job for us. Third down, three yards to go. Ten in the middle again to the story this time. And he's going to be big. We're going to get a late hit on going over. Yep, yep, without a doubt. If he didn't get the first down, he will have it now. I mentioned Steve Jarvis, David Pittman has been running the stats for us. He's a senior communications student here at UMass, and uh, we'd like to thank him also, David Pittman. See, that's a dead ball, dead ball foul, too. I, I think you'll find that, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how much he gained on that play, uh, not very much, but the, the penalty will be tacked on uh, beyond that. Well, he needed to get to the 12 for the first down, and got a tack on five yards and marked the ball. That was real close to a first down. Yeah, it was... Uh, well, they penalized him half the distance to the goal line. That's what they did. Anyway, first and goal from the sub. This looks to the historic, and he is just short of the goal line. But there was that big hole again. That's the same play he scored on uh, scored the first touchdown on. Jim. Backside trap. And Number seven, Scott Rushton. Excellent play. Number 21, Daryl Stewart. Get on the stop. So a big five-yard gain. Second and goal on the one-yard line. Well, they brought the two tight ends into the game now, Gerard and uh, Yavitz. Three backs, and it's Smelly up and over. Touchdown, Massachusetts. Boy, 
boy, that that uh, big offense defensive line just didn't give him any room, and so his uh, forte is going airborne. That's what he did on that play. Watch the replay. There's not much room for him to sneak in there, so he does what's next best. They practice that during the week, Jim. They practice it with uh, with uh, the same same equipment that you practice the high jump. Well, the extra point is good. You hear Section 10 getting shelled down there in the back of the film. Massachusetts has taken a 14-0 lead, and we'll be back with more action after this. to be a mystery, your problems will disappear like magic at Serview's big discount paint and wallpaper department. Because at Serview, you see a fascinating selection of paint and wallpaper at spellbinding Serview discounts. Your home decorating problems will vanish with no hocus pocus, just the magic of Serview's helpful knowledgeable salespeople. And where have you seen that lately? Only at Serview. Next time on The Judge. Dad said if I married her, I'd regret it the rest of my life. A poor girl's hatred for her rich father-in-law drives her over the edge. The girl was obviously unstable. Are you going to let him get away with that? She got violent. My head went click and I just went crazy. She was pointing a gun and she started firing. But everything I did, I did because I loved you. Passion turns to hatred on The Judge. Weekdays at 4 on TV 40. Line. Kevin Smelly, who uh, did not have a good first half and uh, has come back now in the second. Well, he's got great spring in those legs, hasn't he? He sure does. Downs and Cincy back to take this kick from Marco Gabrielli. He's been kicking off well today. He had some good height on that last one, yeah. Yes, sir. And great distance, too. And he's got another one. He That's a great kick. That's a great kick. At the five. Cincy. And he'll go down at the 26, 27 yard line. Let's take another break before we get these plays underway. We'll be back after this. We've got exciting news for you, and it's happening right now at Carl's Piano. Young Chang has authorized a fall factory sale, and they've put their money where it counts. That means tremendous savings for you. So if you're thinking about owning or renting to own a fine piano, do it now. The sale ends when factory pianos are gone. Take advantage of our bona fide double discounts before you miss the deal of your life. Come see us at Carl's Piano, 1205 Boston Road, Springfield. What do you do when you've got a sale that's so big it includes everything in the store? You find the biggest tag in the world and hang it right on the building, the way we're doing it at every Bernie's Newmark and Lewis store this weekend. Yes, everything at Bernie's Newmark and Lewis is on sale, and we mean everything. Every piece of merchandise in every Bernie's Newmark and Lewis is on sale. So if you're looking for the big one, come to Bernie's Newmark and Lewis Saturday and Sunday and watch us beat the competition's price forever. Yeah, Bob, we saw some pushing and shoving going on on that last that's play. Don't know, we're getting a little disgusted maybe at this point. Going over did a nice job on that return because that's an excellent kick to be where they are. They did a nice job. Back to pass. The Schultz across the middle. He's got uh, Rob Brady. And it's complete at the 42. I think Bill Nova's got to make some uh, serious decisions right now. I think they've got to throw the ball a little bit more in order to get back into this football game. Well, they've thrown the ball well. They just haven't been able to throw it into the end zone today. Thompson and Cincy. And this is going to be a run. Jeff Dinkle. And he's got some room across midfield down to the Massachusetts 44-yard line. Jerome Bledsoe on the stop. Got an injury down there. I'm not so sure it might be, uh, well, no, it's not. I was going to say Drew Como, but it's not. I can't see the number. It's a, uh, it's a minute man. 
have been several injuries today. None, as far as I've been able to tell, none have been too serious. UMass had a number of injuries a week ago, uh, but I, I don't think it's kept anybody out of the game. Uh, maybe Mitchell, the uh, receiver, uh, didn't uh, play today because of it. Well, I think he's just got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Yeah. Well, while they attend to him, and we'll try to find out how, who it is, uh, we'll take a break. We'll be back after this. We have a great breakfast at the International House of Pancakes restaurant. I'll have the Rudy Tootie. The Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity breakfast. Uh, I'll have the Rudy Tootie. Two eggs, two bacon, two sausage, two fruit top pancakes, strawberry, blueberry, peach, or cinnamon apple. People just love the breakfast. I'll have the Rudy Tootie. They just take the name. Only two forty nine Monday through Friday, anytime. Next on The People's Court. And the teachers turned around and they started to talk again, and that's when he stabbed me. A classroom confrontation turns violent. And then after we were waving our arms around, I had my pencil in my hand and I stabbed her. I mean, poked her. But who started it? I turned around and I socked her in the arm. The case of when push comes to stab. Ma'am, don't look at her. You're looking at me. Did she say she shoved him first? Weekdays at 5 on TV 40. Well, the injured player was inside linebacker George Corrales, and as you can see, he is coming off the field on his own power. So uh, that last drive by uh, UMass for the touchdown is worth 32 yards, and it took them seven plays to make the score, Jim. So they're controlling the ball well. And the turnover, the interception was the big play on that drive. It wasn't part of the seventh play. Well, Villanova now across midfield. We know what they've been doing when they move it across midfield. Let's see what happens now. Back to pass. Brady to... Oh. Big hits and could not see the receiver on that play. It was... Uh, it... Brady. Well, it yes, was sir. Brady. Picking a seam in the underneath coverage on this play. Quarterback did a nice job. The receiver did a nice job, too. Watch the linebacker, McEwen, kind of stand him up, and those defensive backs coming in, taking those hits. First and 10 that one 30 They kept Lombardi a little bit quiet in the second half, Jim. They have. He's nowhere near as productive as he, as Drew he has Como. been. Drew Como on the stop that time. And that'll bring up second down and nine. Twelve minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And the Wildcats are not on the scoreboard as yet. Schultz. Looks to pass. And he's got Dingle in the flat, but Dingle can't hold on to it. And that'll bring up third down and nine. I think that might have been as good a condition as they could get coming out of that play. If he caught that ball, I think he was set up for real good defensive play. So I don't think Villanova came out of that one too bad, getting the ball back the line of scrimmage on the incompletion. Greg Downs coming into the game now. He will be split to the right. Cincy moves into the slot, and he's going to call he's time out. They've got too many people in the yeah. backfield, Jim. I think they got 12 men out there. No one ever takes time out. Downs came in, uh, came in off the bench, and I, whoever he came in to replace didn't leave the game. Right. So Villanova <laughs> calls timeout only because they didn't want to get a penalty on the play, which is what they've been doing at this point. It's third down and nine. We've got a break in the action. We'll be back after this. We have a great breakfast at the International House of Pancakes restaurant. I'll have the Rudy Tootie. The Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity breakfast. Uh, I'll have the Rudy Tootie. Two eggs, two bacon, two sausage, two fruit top pancakes, strawberry, blueberry, peach, or cinnamon apple. People just love the breakfast. I'll have the Rudy Tootie. They just take the name. Only 249 Monday through Friday, anytime. 
WGGB TV Channel 40 and the Chicopee Chamber of Commerce present the Up With People concert Saturday, November 19th and Sunday, November 20th at 8 p.m. The concert is at the Bellamy Middle School on Pendleton Avenue in Chicopee. Tickets are $9 for adults and $7 for students and senior citizens. There's a $2 discount on tickets purchased before November 11th at the Chicopee Chamber office. Jim Reed, former defensive coordinator, urging that defense on. Third down and nine. This is a big play for the Massachusetts defense. In motion. Cincy. We've got a blitz on. Yes, we have. And he's going to be sacked back there. That's number 30, George Corellis. Now it's going to make a difference to whether UMass is offside, whether they're drawn offside. Exactly what the, what the situation is, we'll have to wait and see. Offside UMass. Now that will not give him a first down though. No, but it's going to make a uh, third and five four situation rather than a third and nine. Still going to pass though, right? Well, I, you know, they've got two downs to make the first down. They've got to go for the score. They've got to score a touchdown if they score anything down here. And so they've got to look at the distances and divide it by two and say this is what they need in each play. Or they could, like you say, they can throw the ball now and try to get the first down. Since he down, so to the right, no, well, they get out of the game. Now they're messed up again. They have messed it up again. We'll see what they do with it. Well, it's going to be a run. And Mr. Dingle once again. And he has the first down. And there's another man down on the play for Massachusetts. Get that number. Is that number 60? Matt Tully. I don't know. I'm, yeah, it is. That looks like Matt Tully. Is. Yes, it is. Number 60, Matt Tully. That's Vic, Vic Keedy there on the left-hand side and Dr. Jim Ralph. Uh, they tend the football team during the fall and two extremely competent people. And they rave about Matt Tully. Villanova with the first down now. Ten, first and ten at the 21-yard line. 11 minutes, 13 seconds to go in the game. Back to pass. He's got Brady in the end zone. Touchdown, Villanova. I don't see, I don't see any flags, Jim. I think that's uh, going to be good. That's a touchdown, and this is a ball game once again. 14 to 7 if they get the extra point. Plenty of time left in the fourth quarter, and Villanova has scored for the first time today. See, they get into the corner, that, they got two deep coverage, and they spread that, uh, that defense out, those two deep people, and they throw the ball to him right in the corner of the end zone. Number 23, Tom Wisco will attempt the point after. Wisco with the point after, it's no good. Big, big play. Well, the score is Massachusetts 14, Villanova 6. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Hinsdale. Experience the excitement. Feel the power. Taste the good life. Hinsdale, the romance, the suspense, the thrill of it. A short drive away through some of the most beautiful country in the world. Hinsdale, experience it. Win, lose, or draw rings in a very special week. And if you're all set, here we go, gang. As Philadelphia proves it's everything it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I'll tell you what a crowd. Join cover girl Carol Alt and Mr. T. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Lena Blackwood and funny man Brad Garrett. Let me get my card to the White LeBaron. For some great moments in American history. Oh, my type of city. You know, my wife calls me the Minute Man. Catch all the fun from the city of brotherly love. Watch Win, Lose, or Draw all this week for Mr. T died. Win, Lose, or Draw weeknights at 7 on TV 40. Jim, they went uh, 64 yards in seven plays. There's a 21-yard TD pass, and that missed extra point. Uh, 
at the conclusion of this football game, regardless of what happens, uh, well, unless uh, Villanova doesn't score again, of course, but uh, if Villanova scores again, uh, that deck, missed extra point is going to be regarded as one of the bigger plays of the game. You can take four or five plays, that plays out of a game, and if they had been a little bit different, it would make all the difference in football. Particularly one like this. That, that could make it real tough to, that could make it tough to win it. Well, this kick is real short, and not a bad kick. That's the fullback, David Mitchell, or Dave, uh, Duncan McRae, who fields it. I don't think Duncan has lined up in the backfield today, has he? Uh, not that I can I don't recall. That's the I first action he he's seen, unless it would be on special teams. And he was one of the up men. Well, he's the third fullback. He's got both uh, uh, Historic and uh, Mitchell back playing fullback, the first two, so that would make the difference. Fullback on his first start back in that BU game in early October. And this one is up the middle. For maybe three yards, uh, Smelly's going to pick up. No, they're going to give him one yard on that. Both coaches right now are trying to outguess one another. Uh, UMass, uh, it's not a matter of outguessing one another. UMass is going to try to keep the ball on the ground to keep the clock running. If they throw the ball, they want to keep it in bounds. Uh, whereas uh, Villanova's got to get the ball back, so they're going to play the run tough. Yeah, I think Jim Reed would like to see a sustained drive at this point. The pitch up to Smelly, and he's got the first down and then some. They take him out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Big that, play for Massachusetts. That was not great uh, defensive play. Uh, is there a flag on that play? Watch the replay. The guy that's responsible for the pitch out here, the defensive uh, back, uh, comes back in on Palazzi and can't get out on the pitch. It's a defensive end. From midfield now. David Mitchell. That was Mitchell for, for about two. And the clock is ticking down to ten minutes. And, of course, uh, this is that sustained drive that Jim Reed is looking for. Out to the right, Newsom, Tobin, Smelling, Palazzo, Cooker out to Tobin. Tobin's got a little running room out there. He's going to pick up 10, 15 yards. He's going to pick up 10, 15 yards. At the 42-yard line, of Villanova. See, different pass pattern. You watch, he just takes a three-step drop and throws that ball out there. That's one a we have quick seen pass. First and ten on the 42-yard line. Well, quarterbacks will take a three-step drop, five-step drop, a seven-step drop. That means that they're going to get three yards off the line of scrimmage, seven yards off the line of scrimmage, or ten. And that's a quick, uh, a quick pass. Good play. You call that when the defense is off the wide receiver. Getting a big push. Smelly in the middle, and he's got four, maybe five yards on the play. Carry for you, Matt. Bill Buckley made the tackle. Massachusetts with a 14 to 6 lead. Nine minutes to go in the game. Tobin to the right. Mitchell goes in motion and this is going nowhere. Pick number 74, Paul Franco came across from that nose guard position. That's a good play by Dave uh, Palazzi. Uh, you know, when it, when it looks like a bad play, you've got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, one thing, I don't want to put a jinx on UMass, but they have not turned the ball over today, right. and that's another big factor in this football game, and he didn't that time when he could have if he tried to make a play out of a play that he couldn't make anything on. Claw belt in the game now. Along with Lucy. Palazzi back to pass across the middle. And he's got... Uh, who does he have there? Is that the tight end? That's Javis. Yeah. Yes. Bill Buckley. We have a stop for Bill And that was his first pass to Javis today. He was a good outlet man. Well, Gerard into the game now. Well, the 
Europeans are getting what they want. They want to go on fourth down. Let's see what happens. It's fourth and one. There's going to be a pitch out to Smelly to the left, and he's got the first down, but there's a flag on the play and a fumble. It's still anybody's ball. And Villanova has fallen on it. But let's see what that flag is about. Well, a lot of things happen on that play. Yeah. The first thing is that I think there's a, uh, there are two flags down there, so I got to believe that there's a holding. I can't see the holding on the play and the replay, but there's, I'm sure there's holding. And then the fumble, just no one seemed to want it. Everybody had a touch of it. Maybe Man, someone reset that like ball up before we open snap. here. Yep. Oh, right there. Jim Pastoric almost had it. Now, the penalty is against Massachusetts, so it's immaterial because Villanova has the ball. They're at their own 28-yard line. Make that 27-28. Uh, yeah, they're going to put it down. You know, I guess I spoke too soon about a turnover, but the, you don't regard that. Uh, well, now the penalty. Well, are now there's another penalty. Here. I think there's a dead ball foul now. I think probably this is uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. All right, that must have been. That was not the flag that we saw originally. No, I think the original yeah. call yeah. was a holding call, which uh, Villanova refused because they recovered the fumble, and I think there were some words after the after that which resulted in this penalty. Well, it's first and ten, Villanova. Zone 42, and this is Dingle. And he's going to get out to about the 49-yard line. Drew Como brought him down. Drew Como's a big guy. He's a guy about 6'4", 220-pound uh, defensive end from North Brantford, Connecticut. He's an excellent player and a real fine baseball player. He hits the baseball so hard, Jim, that I think that he's going to come close to breaking one someday. <laughs> he's a great hitter. Second down and four. Back to pass. Whoops, a stumble, and this pass is incomplete to Jim Cashman. Schultz went to his tight end that time. He, he just didn't have a good chance of throwing that ball. He was slipping around out there, Jim. I'm not saying that uh, he should because the field's in great condition. But don't forget, Villanova plays on synthetic surface all year, and there's a lot of, lot of difference in the friction that you get on that field compared to a natural surface like uh, we have here. Give me the natural surface. I'll, I agree. Third down and four. Schultz, quick pass across the middle, and intercepted by John Cummings. Another big turnover yes, for sir. UMass. That's a big one. Right. And I tell you, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. John Cummings is a 6'3", 240-pound defensive end from Lexington, and, uh, and a fine young man. And the thing is, Sean made the uh, uh, reception or made the interception, but it was caused by that uh, those, that front man, uh, four man rush. We got the hands up and knocked the ball up in the air, which gave Sean time to come underneath it. Pelosi fakes one's up the middle. He keeps it, and he's down inside the 30 yard line. We're going down at about the 27. comes running out of the game. I think he has some problems with his helmet. Uh, yeah, he got, he got the wrong helmet. Another helmet down there. Who's got a seven and an eight? <laughs> That's a great 20-yard gain for Dave Palazzi. First and ten. The ball's at the 27-yard line. And it's up the middle of the story. Gets up one yard, maybe two. Carries for Massachusetts. There's uh, Sean, you're on the sideline, number three, Sean Cummings. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Second down and ten. They didn't give him any yardage that time. and there's a flag on this play. Hey, I think once again we're going to get another holding call on the offensive line. A lot 
lot of penalties. Well, do you take it or you go for third down? Well, it's, uh, they're in field goal range. Big decision. They're in field goal range here, so I think probably they'll take the penalty. I don't know. What you try and do now is to get them out of field goal range. You can play some defense. You watch the official come over to the bench on that. So what he does, he has to go inside. He's got to let the bench know the number of the player that caused the penalty. That's They don't uh, say publicly like they do in the pros who caused the penalty, but the official has to let the bench who the penalty was called against who made the penalty. Well, we would know if we could read his lips. <laughs> That's right. See, in the pros, you're making big money. You get paid that money to be embarrassed. Yeah, but that's the only time those offensive linemen are recognized. <laughs> I think I'd rather not be. Look at the pass now. And in the flat, he's got Homer. And this one is caught at the 20-yard line. And he is just three yards short of a first down. So it'll be third down and three. Excellent throw out here. See that the container is not upfield. So, so Dave gets some width and has plenty of time to set up and get the ball out there to Tobin for an excellent catch. He's a nice receiver. Uh, excellent catch. Then he kept he caught the ball and kept himself in bounds, which is not an easy thing to do. But they practice it all the time. So quick pass inside and it's incomplete. So Yabas. Stop the clock again momentarily. Five minutes, 19 seconds to go in the game. Well, this is a big play for Silvio Bonvini. This, uh, he's going to try it from the 28-yard line, so it's a 38-yard field goal attempt. Villanova can uh, tie this game with one score right now, but if he kicks this field goal, they've got to have two scores in order to just back put it game. away right here. It's up, and it's good. game, Jim, for Villanova to score and maybe uh, get two scores. But the thing is, is that they're also forced into a situation where they've got to throw the ball, and UMass knows this, and so they play uh, good pass defense, they play a nickel defense, so I'll put as many defensive backs in there as they want, because uh, Villanova is probably not going to run the ball. Although with a back like uh, Dingley, who is Dingle, who runs as well as he does and as fast as he does, uh, he can end up with the ball once in a while, too. He's always a threat to go all the way. Although he has not had a lot, surprisingly to me, he has not had a lot of big plays over the year. Five minutes, 14 seconds to go in the game. Massachusetts leads it, 17 to six. And this one will go back to the five, taken there by Greg Downs. He's at the 10, the 15, and down at the 22-yard line. So the Villanova offense will take over. First and 10. I said the 22. Make that the 27-yard line. First and 10 on its own 27. Dingle's longest run today has been 17 yards. Back to pass now. He's going to air this one out. He's going deep. Oh, almost had it. Rob Brady. And he became a bit entangled back there. He was trying to get... Trying to get Dorrit off of him. That's a, that's a tough play for Doran. He's a strong safety, and uh, I'm not sure he 
can run with those wide receivers, so he made a nice play. Uh, he was playing chewing gum on that one. That's right. 5-0-1 to go in the game now. Villanova trying to make something happen. Brady and Cincy. Back to pass. It's across the middle. To Jim Cashman, the tight end. And he's down at the 46-yard line. Andrew Thomas made the stop. Still a good play. The defense uh, is a reception and for a decent gain, but the defense kept the ball in bounds and the clock is running. That's what's important to UMass right now. That's a good 19-yard gain, but he was tackled in bounds, so the clock is running. Very important at this stage of the game for UMass. First and 10 at the 46. And yeah, I believe an illegal procedure. is against Connecticut, and it is the illegal procedure. Yeah, I say Connecticut, Villanova. I'm only a month behind. That'll bring up first and 15. Cincy and Brady to his left. He's going to throw deep again. He's got two of them streaking in the same spot, and he's too deep. And that was Thompson and Cincy, rather. And that'll bring up second down and 15. And now they are going to the pass almost exclusively. Well, they've got to, Jim. Uh, the thing is that the incompleted pass stops the clock for them, and they're looking for the big play. Uh, they're looking for a substantial gain. They've got to. When they look at the stop the clock, if they complete the pass, they want to get out of bounds. The clock is a factor. They're playing the clock, both offense and defense. Down to the left, and it's going to be a run. They're going back to Dingle. And he doesn't get much at all. Give him two yards on the play. The defense is acting, uh, reacting well uh, to all of this. Uh, they, they realize what Dingle can do to you because he, he's a burner, so he can make the big play. That was a good call. They've got to go back and throw the ball right now. The next two plays, they've got to throw the ball. They cannot give the ball up. Four wide receivers in the game now. Sure. Intercepted by Vaughn Williams. And he's still running at the 40. And out of bounds at the 35. And that's going to break the camel's back right there, Bob. That's the one that might put this thing away, Jim, because uh, what UMass is going to do right now is just... Uh, see, the ball was tipped. The ball was... Uh, that was uh, good for anybody, I believe. Once, once again, they had two receivers in the same area that's here. That's right. Now That's they did right. that just a few plays ago. Exactly. It was Greg Downs was the short man there. I think the pass was to Brady. Uh, I've got to guess that Downs didn't belong there. Right. I tell you, there's something else that happens on that play. That ball's intercepted. The other defensive backs immediately look for those receivers and block them so that they can get a good return. That was a good defensive play. Outstanding defensive play. Jim's historic up the middle now. And it's time to just run time off the clock. Four, uh, three minutes and 12 seconds to go in this ball game. Massachusetts leads it. 17 to 6. Had Villanova been able to score on that last series, they would have had a shot at it, but uh, they didn't score. They no longer have the ball, and they trail by 11 points. And UMass has run the ball 26 times in this half and thrown the ball for 10 times. Uh, they, they've dominated this second and half. And they haven't turned the ball over That's either. That's right. Well, they have, but they were not big turnovers. They they turned the ball over, but still left Villanova a good distance to go for a touchdown, which they never got. Paul Franco made the stop that time on Razzie. That'll bring up third down. Seven yards to go. 225, 224, the clock ticking down. And Massachusetts is feeling pretty comfortable at this point. 
You're not going to see much else happen it's, uh, the rest of this uh, afternoon, Jim. They're going to keep the ball on the ground. They'd like to get a first down, of course, but I... Well, Tobin out in the flat. He was open for a while, but now Palazzi's going to keep it. There's a flag in the backfield. Palazzi goes down at the 25. I have to think that flag's going to go against the minute, man. See what the call is. Flags back to 45. A spot that Dave Palazzi did not occupy very long at all. So the ball is going to go back. They call holding against Massachusetts. That will make it third down. And let's see where they spot the ball. Third down and about 16. Palazzi has historic in the backfield. Three receivers, back to pass, and down the sidelines, and it won't matter if this is caught at all because both receivers, or I should say uh, Lamar Newsom was out of bounds and was the defensive man. And there's another flag on the play. Once again, it's holding against Massachusetts. And I would have to think that um, this call will be declined. It is. That'll make it fourth down. And Dimitri Yavis will come on to punt. He's punted several from this point in the game. He's had some good punts. Brady back to receive. His own, standing at his own 10. He aims it at the sidelines. It's going to be a good one. I think he's out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. And move him up to the 12 to 13. They're going to give it to him. So Villanova will take over with a minute 29 to go in the game, trailing 17 to six. First and 10 at the Wildcat 13 yard line. Kirk Schultz comes him out of the huddle. He has three receivers. Oh, and one of them was just knocked down on the play. He gets his tight end though, Jim Cashman. George Corrales is there to make the stop. They'll give him those short ones. Number 88, John. They spotted at the 25, first and 10, a minute 20 to go in the game. Quick count. Schultz across the middle to the tight end again. And Cashman's going to get out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Massachusetts back in its prevent defense. See on the replay, Cash, is, uh, Cashman is all by himself, about 10 yards down the field. The defense has moved way back. He gets good yardage before they even get to him. First and 10 from the 46. Schultz can't find a man open, and they're going to bring him down just across midfield at the 47. First man to make the tackle. They'll go without a huddle. Three receivers. Three wide receivers. Again, a receiver knocked down and he has to go short. And it is caught. At the 40-yard line, at the Massachusetts 40. That stops the clock with 42 seconds to play. And I'm afraid this is going to be a little, this is too little too late. Villanova made it into the end zone once today, missed the extra point. A touchdown.
touchdown still put them short. Brady and Cincy split out. Schultz airs it out. He is deep. And Rob Brady once again colliding with his defender. He was not going to get to that. No, Andrew Thomas there with him on the play. Second down. We have 34 seconds to go in the game. The Minutemen lead 17 to 6. And not that it matters, but Villanova has two timeouts remaining. Schultz back to pass, and well, the defense didn't get him. I thought they might. This one complete once again to the tight end, Jim Cashman. And he goes down at the 29-yard line. That will stop the clock with 23 seconds to go. Drew Como in on the tackle. That's a first down. They'll move the yard markers. Ball at the 30. Schultz across the middle. It's complete to Brady. And Brady was hit hard. He is down. Duran in there. He is also down. But Brady has been... Uh, well, we just, just heard that Westchester beat Delaware today. So uh, that doesn't matter in the... It doesn't matter in the standings, in the Yancon standings, because... Uh, it was not a conference game, but all of a sudden Delaware losing here at the end of the season. Check this replay and we'll see the hit that Brady takes. It was a huge one, if you will. He's been real active today right there. Pat Duran put one on him. And uh, Pat was hurting too, but not quite as much. Brady's still down on the field. <laughs> he looks over at Pat. I think he said something like, good hit. So he'll leave the game. But he did make the reception, much to his credit. And Villanova, with 15 seconds showing on the clock, has a first and 10 at the 11-yard line. to pass. Over in the corner. This one's going to be too long. Jerome Bledsoe defending breakdown. Did not really have a shot at that one at all. Schultz wasted it. Four seconds. Ticked off the clock. We're down to 11 seconds and they're just kind of drawing it out at this point because Villanova will not win it. This, by the way, will put Villanova pretty much out of the running in the Yancon this year. Hell, a flag on that one. And let's see which way she goes. Were they drawing off? Yes, they were. And uh, two seconds clicked off the clock that time. Rob Brady was back in the game, pointing that out. They're going to put the seconds back on the clock. Stop the game to do it. Don't know that it matters much at this point. There we go. down and 15. The ball at the 16. Schultz into the end zone. Almost intercepted by George Corellis. George looked around and it was right in his hands. Another five seconds ticked off the clock. And uh, this has been a long final minute. 
Massachusetts is going to win it. It's just a question of whether they win it 17 to 6 or whether Villanova manages to score right here at the end. Schultz. Short this time to his tight end, who has been the man on this drive. And he coughs her up. That was, no, he doesn't need That game is over the time. It's clicked off the clock. And the Minutemen have won it. 17 to 6. Let's go down to the field and talk to Jim Reed. We're still looking for Jim Reed. Bob Pickett left me two minutes to go. Maybe he's still working his way down to the field. Actually, I think he's looking for Jim. Uh, while he does that, yeah, we do. <laughs> Let's get a shot of this. Okay, Bob. Okay. Hey, Jim. Hey, Bob. Pickett, seventh win. Yes. Three losses. Yes. Hey, wait till we get in the locker room at least. <laughs> Tell me about it. What's a big play? What's a turning point? Bob, I learned everything about coaching from you, and you know that. Let me tell you, I tell you, our guys kept their poise, and it was really rough out there, and we just kept banging and banging and banging, and we got every break in terms of, like, we intercepted a great ball, John McEwen, huh? And you hey, recruited him, didn't the you? The end of the first half. Yeah, what about it? That's a big play. I don't the even defense. remember. You don't remember? Oh, yeah, right. You're on the goal well, line. We'll watch the film tomorrow. Hey, big guy. We've done it all year, haven't we? Huh? It was a great win for us, Bob. A great win. Thanks, Jim. Okay, Je uh, Jim Klein. Thank you, Bob. Well, Massachusetts still in the running in the Yancon. They, uh, as we pointed out earlier in the show, they're going to have a tough time. The Minutemen are going to have a tough time actually moving on to the uh, NCAA 1-2-A uh, uh, playoffs because of the losses to UConn and Delaware. However, they can still tie for the Yankee Conference Championship this year. They just have a tiebreaker system that decides who moves on. But at this point, uh, they have just the two losses. We heard that uh, Delaware lost today. Uh, that was a non-conference game, but Delaware is losing uh, at this point in the season. Uh, Massachusetts, I think Jim Reed said it rather well today in that uh, Massachusetts got all the breaks. They created a lot of those breaks for themselves, but uh, the breaks went their way. They uh, did not have any crucial turnovers. Uh, they didn't have any costly penalties, nothing near what Villanova had every time they moved across midfield. And as a result, uh, the Minutemen ha have won it. That final score once again, 17 to 6, Massachusetts beats Villanova. Thank you for watching. We'll see you. Thank <laughs> you.